This week on Close Talkers, we watched Season 6, Episode 1, The Chaperone. So, Katie. Hi. How'd you like The Chaperone? Meh. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, it was very Kramer heavy for me. That was my oh. note later on. By the time he's there in Atlantic City, uh, I'd reached my limit. I see. How about you? Uh, it was fine. Uh, everybody was acting pretty ridiculous. Mm-hmm. This is a weird season opener. How so? Well, no. And as soon as I said that, I thought it's not because George is in his new job. Yeah. Elaine gets a new job. Um, and Jerry and Kramer do things. So it's it's like new beginnings for at least two of them. Yeah, I think as like a sitcom goes, they'll they'll make a change, and it's like it might take them a little bit of like time to figure out how that change is going to go. Yeah, um, but I think they're doing that. <laughs> so this episode was written by Larry David, uh, Bill Masters, and Bob Shaw. Apparently, Bill Masters and Bob Shaw wrote a first draft just called "The Birds." Uh, <laughs> which Larry David then uh, edited. It was directed by Andy Ackerman. Is this now the end of the Tom Sharonis era? We are out of our Sharonis era, Mm. and we are in the Ackerman era. So Andy Ackerman continues and directs uh, every episode until the finale, save but one. Oh, wow. Yeah, new new, new voice. Mm. Um, Apparently, when he joined the cast, he was very much in like, awe of all the like comedic talent and he was a a fan so Hmm. like a simpsons writer who grew up watching the simpsons ah exactly but it's still good (laughs) uh it aired on september 22nd 1994 vulture.com ranked it as the 18th best seinfeld episode i don't know with screen crush having at a much more reasonable 37th yeah at least so who are the guest stars so the guest stars we had Ian Amber Crombie, taking the role of Mr. Pitt. He was in Army of Darkness, Adam's Family Values, and Birds of Prey. Who was he in Adam's Family Values? I don't know. Oh. He was also the voice of Senator Palpatine in Star Wars The Clone Wars. That was Star Wars The Clone Wars the movie, not Star Wars The <laughs> Clone Wars the TV series. We had Gail Strickland playing the role of Jocelyn Landis. We did not believe that Elaine had grace. <laughs> we should have played a drinking game. How many times she said grace? How many times they say grace in this episode? Yeah. Uh, she was in The American President, Dark Shadows, and an episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Gotta have a Trek connection. We had Marguerite McIntyre playing the role of Karen, or Miss Rhode Island. She was in Red Dragon, Kyle XY, and The Vampire Diaries. We had Regis Philbin. Get out of here. He was the voice of the announcer of the Miss America pageant. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were joking. <laughs> uh, he was from Live with Regis and okay. Kathy Lee. <laughs> Live with Regis. Live with Regis and Kelly. We also had Danny Tartable, played right field for the Yankees, finished off his career as a DH. We had Buck Showalter. Hmm. who uh, played in the Yankees minor league system, but never played any games in the uh, in the bigs. Uh, he has managed over 3,000 games and has a uh, 5'10 winning percentage. Is he still a manager? He is still a manager of the New York Mets. Huh. Is he related to Michael Showalter? I don't know. Hmm. Is that it? You got to read the synopsis, and we got to throw it back to last week to see if I remembered it. Not it in the episode. Okay, get out of here. Did you remember this episode? Jerry dates Miss Rhode Island. Uh, however, as a contestant, she needs a chaperone, so Kramer tags along. I think I nailed it. Let me read the synopsis. I got the state right. Jerry dates a Miss America contestant with Kramer as self-appointed chaperone. George proposes new Yankees uniforms. Elaine gets a new job. Kramer wasn't self-appointed. No, he wasn't. 
Who was invited like a vampire. Once those vampires are in your house. <laughs> Jerry invited Kramer in one time, and now Ooh. he just lets himself in, in all the time. True. We don't know what he does. Is, he Kramer, could- is Kramer a vampire? <laughs> That's what I'm we, we do see that he goes out during the day. Mm, true. So in the opening stand-up, Jerry says baseball is, sorry, sex is full of baseball metaphors. Mm-hmm. Uh, I laughed out loud. You know, he's listing them all off. She wanted a diamond. Mm. You laughed, I think, when he said, people come home, they say, we won. And he says, no, they won. You watched. Yeah. I, I really I really don't like the, oh, we got to do this and we got to get better. and We got to trade this guy. No, they have to do those things. And you were a fan of them doing those things. If the Leafs won the Stanley Cup, would you not say we won? I don't think I would. Well, I guess you're just better than me. I have put work <laughs> into my team's success by suffering. As a fan, I've also suffered. I've suffered because they lost. <laughs> George is very handsy with the uh, the ball player in the locker room. He's slapping his arm. He's, you know, he checks the tag and then he like gives his bat a pack. I think he whacks him in the butt too. It's very homoerotic. Very. Ba- Baseball is very homoerotic. Uh, the pants are tight enough, and then he goes and suggests cotton. It's kind of interesting if you think about baseball uniforms; they've gotten tighter over the years. You look back at like the nineteen like oh yeah, they look 30s. like baggy pajamas, They're like baggy pajamas, and then like guys these days are like tucking in their shirt. They're wearing a belt. They got like skin tight pants on. Yeah. yeah. Whereas like you know mobility. Yeah. So I looked up. You know, in the end, the cotton jersey shrink. I wrote. Oh my God, Madden Lee just split his pants. <laughs> yeah. They're walking like penguins. <laughs> Polyester is strong, light, and breathable. It says breathable, but I don't really feel like it's breathable. But lately, not lately, like in the last 20 years, uh, sports jerseys are more like vented and they've got the meshy parts yeah. and stuff. So, like, I think you can have like, a layer of polyester that is like totally non breathable, but then you can have it like in the armpits and everything. Yeah, it's woven all... like it's like mesh. Yeah. Right? I think about like hockey jerseys that I bought in or were bought for me in the early 2000s versus nowadays. Like they're so technical now. Mm. So there was, I should look up what season it was, but there was a year where they changed the material um, that hockey jerseys were made out of mm-hmm. and players were complaining that it didn't absorb as much sweat and so like oh. sweat was like dripping out of their bodies into their gloves <laughs> making them heavier oh gross it was a whole like thing like the opposite problem of the cotton jerseys yeah i think it might have been that they started using like eco-friendly recyclable materials and it's like they didn't absorb as much well technically polyester is plastic so it is recyclable yeah i don't think it's Eco-friendly. No, it's not at all. What you got next? I don't know. We're, we're back at uh, Yankee Stadium. Mm-hmm. Are they even playing Baltimore or just Elaine wears that hat every time? Um, I don't know if we know who they were playing, but Elaine is re-wearing her Baltimore Orioles hat. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of this was filmed uh, at the California Angels hmm. uh, Stadium in Anaheim when the Yankees were actually in town to, to play. I like that it's a recurring thing that Elaine gets booed at baseball games. <laughs> well, she stands up during play. Come on. <laughs> and in walks Miss Rhode Island. Okay, I wrote down, those are some 90s sundresses. Oh my gosh, yeah. Buttons all the way from neck to ankles. Mm-hmm. Um, floral patterns, like, wowie. They look like a joke. They're probably just like fashionable dresses. Yeah. <laughs> So Elaine leaves to check her messages because Doubleday might call her. Apparently there's an opening because Jackie Onassis uh, has just left as editor. I think she died. So this is a very timely reference. (laughs) Yeah. Because Jackie Onassis died the day that the season five finale aired in May of 1994. And Mm -hmm. this aired in September. So did they write this when she had already died? I think. So, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. So, fun fact, not fun fact, when 
Jacqueline Bouvier, Jackie Kennedy. Marge's mom? <laughs> when Jackie Kennedy married Aristotle Onassis, she legally changed her name to Jacqueline Onassis, thereby losing Secret Service protection mm. afforded to wives of former – or spouses of former presidents. And I mean, if anybody needs it, it's a Kennedy. <laughs> right? Maybe that was her plan because, like, you know, the Secret Service was in on it. Oh, my God. Um, And I didn't know this, but when they got married, she, like, lost status. Like, people people called her a public sinner yeah. and stuff because he was divorced and his wife was still alive. And she was, like, a bad Catholic for marrying a man. Yep. An yeah, unforgivable people, sin. People got outraged about the weirdest things. Still do. One thing we can say about Jackie O, she had she grace. She had grace. You either have it or you don't. I do like the way that once Elaine knows this interview is like, <laughs> yeah, not going anywhere. She, she, she doesn't you know, doesn't no cuts pretense. and runs. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah. I got no chance with this, do I? No. I'll see you around. So endearing, and I really like to how when she meets Mister Pitt at the cafe, she's like. Hunched over, like, mm. drinking her iced tea funny. Like, she's not trying to impress anybody. No. But he's like, you have some, Grace. So it is possible to have some. According to Mr. Pitt. You don't want too much. I don't know if we should put too much uh, weight into Mr. Pitt's uh, thoughts, especially about socks. I didn't write anything because I think I was just enjoying at the end with all the socks and Elaine having a breakdown. Yeah. It was funny. I guess this was a funny episode. I think that was a funny storyline. I think, like, the George and the Yankees, like, yeah. that's a funny storyline. The whole Miss Rhode Island thing, I didn't I didn't really care for the Miss Rhode Island character. No. Uh, I didn't like how she talked. Oh, wow. I didn't care for her tone. I didn't care for her tone. She sounded very, I don't know. She was putting on, like, a voice. Sure. Uh, was that before or after Creamer told her to put on a voice? I don't know. I think I didn't like that main, the A story, but I think yeah, that it had solid, solid sub stories. So when Jerry says uh, he's going on a date with a Miss America contestant, Kramer immediately goes, what state? Oh, they're island. never in contention. I don't think they are. I, I don't, we should look I, up I and know. see the last time Miss Rhode Island won Miss America, if ever. Also, beauty pageants are weird. Beauty pageants are weird, and are you surprised that Kramer has encyclopedic knowledge of them? Mm. Hey, Google, has Miss Rhode Island ever won Miss America? What a dumb sentence. Oh, 2012. Olivia Culpo, Miss Rhode Island, won Miss U... Oh, sorry, Miss USA. Oh, that's totally different. That's <laughs> a different one. <laughs> is it? Is it? Is Miss USA different from Miss America? Yeah, totally different. Come on. But mm -hmm. USA is America. I actually have no idea. Which is the one that Trump runs? Isn't that Miss USA? He owned Miss Universe. Oh, which includes Miss USA and Miss Teen USA. I don't think Rhode Island has ever won. Hmm. From which state are the most Miss America winners from? Texas. Uh, incorrect. There have been three Miss America winners from Texas. 1942, 1971, 1975. Uh, California. Close. California's had six. New York? Bingo, bango, bongo. The Big Apple. I just went by population. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Seven winners. 1945, 1976, 1984, 2013, 2014, 2015. Wow. Three in a row. And 2019. Oof. So I wanted to comment on Jerry's purple jacket over a purple shirt for his date with Miss Rhode Island. Oh, yeah? That's my comment. Um, Kramer's tweed jacket over a banana shirt. I like uh, his banana shirt. You own a shirt with your own face on it. Yes, I do. Several of my own faces on it. Several of my own face? How many faces do you have? Well, I only have one face, but there are many... Of my same oh, face <laughs> on that shirt. So they're talking, uh, Jerry Kramer and Miss Rhode Island about pageants, and uh, 
Kramer says, you know, Miss Texas blew it. Mm. She goes, what, what, what could she have done? Tape her breasts together. Yep. Tape your breasts together, Vaseline on the teeth. You got to pull out all the tricks. This is Miss America, Katie. Cincher. You got to take it seriously. <laughs> this isn't Miss USA. Come yeah. on. So I wrote, Kramer in the hotel room prepping Miss Rhode Island is Bart prepping Lisa for Little Miss Springfield. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Walking around. Why does every man think that they can do the walk? <laughs> you all look ridiculous doing the walk. What did you think of the questions that Kramer was asking Miss Rhode Island? What would be the correct answer to the last one? Would you sleep with the enemy nation's president to avoid nuclear war? I wonder if there was a lot of outtakes and they just let like Kramer <laughs> like riff question or Michael Richards riff questions. Yeah. I feel like in if if this episode were coming out today in a series like oh, I'm trying to trying to think of a I was going to say like Parks and Rec, but obviously yeah. it doesn't just, like there would just be like outtake after outtake of you know fake question. Do you remember the, like, whatever it was, Miss Teen Pageant uh, girl's answer that went viral a couple of years ago? Like, such as, of course I do. Of course I do. Are we playing it? I'm trying to try. To, I, I meant to try and find it, and I forgot. <laughs> Miss South Carolina? Question. Hello, South Carolina, please pick out the name of the judge. Judge number five, Amy Teagarden. Recent polls have shown a fifth of Americans can't locate the U.S. on a world map. Why do you think this is? I personally believe that U.S. Americans are unable to do so because uh, some people out there in our nation don't have maps, and uh, I believe that our ed- education, like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq, everywhere like such as, and I believe that they should, uh, our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S., or or should help South Africa, and should help the (laughs) Iraq and the Asian countries, so we will be able to build up our future. Thank you very much. (laughs) I'm just going to say it. I think Kramer was right. (laughs) Miss Rhode Island goes in there with, you know, some half-witted magic dubs and stumbles through a question. <laughs> There's no way she's going to win. She she went into a loop. She, you know. Such as, and the South Africa. Yeah, that was... Oof. Why did you pull South Africa into this? I don't know. You, and I, the Iraq. Yikes. Those Asian countries. Yeah. <laughs> I think she needed a map just to get through that answer. <laughs> so I had to look up some things. When Jerry and George can't sleep... And he goes and dumps the water on the birds. Mm-hmm. And he gets back into bed. He says, good night, Ollie. And George says, good night, Stan. Yeah, Laurel and Hardy. Okay, well, you didn't have to look it up, I guess. I also had to look up Mr. Blackwell. Do you know who that is? I did not know Mr. Blackwell. He is a famous fashion critic. Ah, I see. So when George is suggesting new outfits, he calls him Mr. Blackwell. Uh, I have a question for you. Yes. If something belongs to Jackie Onassis... How would you say that? Jackie Onassis's. <laughs> Jackie Onassis's. Mm-hmm. I tried to write that and I was just like, I don't know how you actually spell Onassis, but I spelled O-N-A-S-S-A-S-S-A-S-S-E-S. It's a f- few too many asses in there. Onassis's. Well, you would spell it Onassis with an apostrophe at the end of it and yeah. no S. Yeah. George is brushing his teeth out in like the main room of the hotel room. Gross. Well, no, he 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 walks out to be like, what, what, why is I, all this yelling happening? He doesn't have to walk out. You should never walk out. You never have to walk out with a toothbrush in your mouth and foam at the sides. Uh, I don't know if your uh, roommate's being accused of avian side. Why don't you just finish brushing and then walk out? Maybe he had just started. He mm. had to get his full two minutes in. It's mm. kind of all I have for this episode. Apparently I killed Miss Rhode Highland's doves with a bucket of water last night. <laughs> well, there's a sentence. Um, one thing that I noted is um, when Miss Rhode Island was walking out on stage to sing, she waved her arms like Conor McGregor entering a ring. How's that? You haven't seen how Conor McGregor walks no. around? 
It, like like well, what I just did, like pretend muscle man with my arms out. Yeah, but Conor McGregor is much more ridiculous. Well, just by nature. And then I wrote down Let Loose by Lucy LaDuca. I don't get it. Do you remember Lucy LaDuca singing Let Loose on RuPaul's Drag Race? Uh, was it in the mu- the musical live? No, it was her talent. Oh. No, I've, I've erased it from my mind. <laughs> well. Sorry. Somebody out there will appreciate. I'll probably cut this out. Great. Just say it again. I'll act like I know what you're talking about. I thought uh, Miss Rhode Island's thing. I thought Miss Rhode Island. I thought. I thought. <laughs> you're you ever stuck in dream? a loop. <laughs> Do you ever have that dream? Such as. <laughs> I thought Miss Rhode Island singing gave real uh, Lucy LaDuca let loose vibes. Huh. I hope you leave all of this in. <laughs> Oh, what do we have on tap for next week? What do we have on tap for next week? The big salad? The big salad. The big salad. Uh, George buys Elaine a big salad, and George's girlfriend uh, claims thanks for it. Hmm. I haven't seen this episode, but whenever I have a big salad, I do a Dinala- I do an Elaine impression hmm. of, what I, of something I haven't heard. I just go, can I get it in a big bowl? Is that right? Eventually, yes. Oh, okay. Not this time? Not this time. Yeah. Oh. Well, I have some corrections. Okie dokie. Did we, did we say anything wrong in the hour and ten minute podcast that we did <laughs> last week? Well, not wrong, but Kathy Lee is no longer hosting today. Oh, that's a shame. What's Hoda doing? She's still hosting today. Um, Kathy Lee retired and was replaced with Jenna Bush, daughter of George W. Bush. Well, you got to have both sides. Apparently, she's not a Republican. Oh. Kelly Ripa hosted by herself when Regis retired uh, for a while until they got a replacement. And Jerry Seinfeld was the first guest host. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I don't think he'd be good at that. No. Um, Regis held the Guinness World Record for the most hours spent on TV. That's something. And his father went to that high school. Oh. Regis. Yeah. So I looked up that Buddy Rich bootleg. Okay, yeah, we yelled at the orchestra. Yeah, and uh, it was a clip of Jerry Seinfeld talking about how he knows the entire tape by heart. Oh yeah, and he refers to it as florid, inspired rants of pure rage. <laughs> um, and I mistakenly said that a friend of ours won seventy thousand dollars in a fifty-fifty. Mm. He did win fifty-fifty, but it was seventy-five hundred dollars. Ah, that's much more reasonable. It's still pretty good. It's not bad, but 70s a lot. This was, he pointed out, this was pre when you could buy 5050s from outside the stadium. Yeah. This was pre smartphones, hmm. pre credit card tap. Like, I think you had to pay in cash. Oh, yeah. So think of the jackpots now. They're bigger. <laughs> okay. Bye. See you next week. Maybe. Oh, no, 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 we got to do one more thing, because I forgot to give you part of your anniversary present. Oh, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Can I give it to you now? Sure. It's not wrapped. Ugh. I wrapped everything else, and I forgot about it. Here you go. Thank you. Do you want me to open it on the air? I don't know, you don't need to include it in the podcast, but I'd like to get your reaction. Is it this stupid dress? Thank you, I guess. You bought me the dress I hate. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Thanks. Love you. I love you too. Bye. Believe it or not, this is our podcast. Please subscribe at the end. If you subscribed, we would be happy. Please subscribe to us. Believe it or not, it's our podcast. Is that a Seinfeld reference?